If there's one thing all of us really want to be legends at, and let me tell you what it is, it's aiming. But is get aimed just about practice or does technique play a role in it too? We got to find out. Bunch of crunch army. Listen, today I'm going to be showing you guys six pro techniques pros use that you probably don't. And I just want to say this up front and be really, really real. All right. Good aim is mostly derived from lots of lots of practice. So if you don't put in the time, you're not going to see results. Still, several techniques and strategies can really allow you guys to land more shots consistently, some of which we don't really see a lot of players take advantage of. And so, you know, that's what we're going to be looking at today. You know, some game changing techniques that's really going to take your aim to the next level. Who's ready for that? You know, here are some tips, man, that you can really, really use to practice, all right? Make sure to like the video and subscribe today for more videos just like this. And let me know in the comments which weapon is your favorite to land shots with. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, pull. Yo, let's get this going. All right, so the first aiming technique we're gonna talk about is being patient so you can just line up a better shot. Now, having patience with your aim applies to a lot of weapons like ARs and snipers, but more often than not, man, like it's shotguns where self-restraint is critical. Now, this was true with the pump last season, but now that the charge is back, it's become even more beneficial for us to be patient with our shots. Obviously, the charge is like, you know, one of the more potent weapons in the game, but due to its slow fire rate, you usually get punished hard if you miss a shot. So compared to always going for fast flicks, this is where being patient can actually help a lot, especially when it comes to hitting those killer 200 plus headshots. How exactly? Good question. Well, one reason is that you can get a little bit more time to, you know, assess your opponent's movement. You're going to see a pattern, like if they jump or straight to the side. And once you get a better idea of how they're moving, it just makes lining up a headshot a lot more straightforward. Now to us, the best example of a pro who's perfected this technique is Faze Martas. Okay, so a lot of these clips are from last season when the pump was around, but the same applies with the charge. So just note how he actually takes his time. For the most part, he'll take like a half of a second lining up a shot in a point blank fight, such as, you know, when he's in the same box as his opponent or when he's just got his opponent trapped with peace control. But if there is no immediate peace control opportunity, or you know he has to shoot before his opponent builds cover, that's when he'll go for a flick since time is of the essence. So in summary, yes, flicks can still be very beneficial, guys, but for those do or die situations, it's better just to take an extra half a second and just make sure your shot is on point before pulling the trigger. Just make sure you practice, all right? We 100% recommend training this technique in Raiders aim dual map, load it up, uh, but don't go for flicks, all right? Instead, try to hit as many 200 plus charge shots as you can. Seeing that big number is key here, my friends. So keep at it and you're gonna start one shot in it more often. Okay, so before we move on, if you ever wanted to learn from one of the greats, make sure to check out Clix's exclusive master course on Pro Guys, where Clix tells the secrets of how to become the world-class pro and box fighter he is today. It is crazy. Don't waste time learning them yourself. Like click here and just check the description and just gain access to Clix's master course today. Okay, we gotta move on. When it comes to hitting consistent 200 pumps, another crucial factor is your crosshair placement. Now, the basic idea behind crosshair placement is to always have your reticle aim at a critical spot where you think an opponent's gonna peak. This is so fundamental because proper crosshair placement shortens the distance that you're gonna have to move your crosshair, which in turn allows you to shoot quicker and with higher accuracy. So for example, like if you make a window edit and you peek it from the left, where should you aim? Well, you could just stare at the wall and just straight right until your crosser ends up over the open window. However, let me say this, like with that, your opponent could peek first and just clap you. A better choice, I would say, is to keep your crosshair at head height on the window at all times and just adjust it as you straight to the right. And that way, you're always gonna be ready to shoot. This is just one example, but hopefully you guys really get the picture, right? And I know that when things get crazy in game, you don't really have the time to consider precisely where you need to place your crosshair. I get it. So in general, a good rule of thumb is to always default your crosshair position to head height. And you know, just only adjust you know, based on if the situation calls for something else. It takes a lot of really getting used to, but since most fights happen on an equal level, that's where you should always default your crosshair to. 
So remember, try to keep your crosshair head level and just aim it where you think opponents are gonna peek. And in a nutshell, like that's the proper crosshair placement. And doing so will have you hitting way more shots. All right, we gotta move on, man. We gotta move on. Next, I wanna talk about tap firing and first shot accuracy. All right, first things first, like what in the world is tap firing? <laughs> well, it's when you fire slightly slower than a full spray with a rifle, but not slow enough to initiate first shot accuracy. And in our experience, tap firing makes your shots more accurate than a full spray without hurting your overall damage potential. And the reason behind that seems to be that your rifle's recoil does reset just a bit more than you know when compared to a full auto spray making your bloom not as miserable. And so with that said though, like the difference is minor compared to a full auto spray. So at close distances, like maybe within 30 meters, full auto or tap fire probably won't make too much of a difference. But beyond that, like 35 meters plus, tap firing is more beneficial. And from what we've seen, it just leads to more consistent aim. Okay, further than 100 meters though, I mean, I'd say that you should almost exclusively use first shot accuracy, AKA when you stand still and just let your crosshair tighten, since it can be extremely powerful against players really far in the distance. Unfortunately though, like some of us aren't really too confident in our long distance aim yet, and if that's the reason you avoid using first shot accuracy, then you definitely need to hit up an aim trainer. All right guys, Skavox Aim Trainer by Dunwozy, for instance, offers so much and really the best choice for a lot of us, all right? You gotta check it out, guys, check it out. Both the Tile Frenzy and Range Drop Drills are insanely useful for training with first shot accuracy. Even just 15 minutes a day, it's gonna do wonders, man. It's gonna change your life. And once you hop into actual games, trust me, you're gonna start hitting way more long distance tags. All right, we gotta keep rolling, let's keep it going, because next, we gotta talk about utilizing enemy movement, which can really help with all types of weapons and aiming styles. For instance, tracking aim, many people think that tracking is just a skill that just has you react and just keep your crosshair locked on the enemy in real time. And that's kinda true, but really high-level players take it a step further, and they really use their opponent's own movement against them to sort of predict where they should aim and how fast or slow they need to track. I mean, just think of how many different ways enemies can move predictably in Fortnite. As of now, there are rifts, you know, shockwave grenades, bouncers, cars, boats, jumping, swimming, and even just running around. Every one of these can really make movement predictable in their own way, right? So if you can learn how these affect, you know, character movement and really just get really used to them, you can start really taking advantage. And it's not just tracking, like even with flicking, you can really utilize how your enemies move. In fact, I mean, we tell people all the time to not just jump in close quarter combat because once you jump, your trajectory and landing spot is gonna always be the same. And really it just makes it a whole lot easier for your opponent just to line up a nasty headshot, especially if they're patient, like we just mentioned, earlier in this video. So if there's one thing that you gotta take away from this, guys, is to start paying attention to movement. Not only how each item or vehicle moves enemies, but also even just the direction your opponent straights in a fight. All right, get this down, all right, guys? I'm telling you, you're gonna start to see a lot more shots connect. All right, next up, my family. Bunch of crunch on me, hope you guys are still here, man. Let's go, we gotta get better, we gotta get better. This is our season, season five, let's go. So this one isn't really a technique, but it's just something that a lot of pros with higher sensitivities do, and that's using a low targeting sensitivity. Like, why would you wanna set your targeting sensitivity to a low percentage? Well, let me say this, in our experience, it makes your aim more accurate. Each mouse or joystick movement you make, like, it really becomes more minuscule, meaning you have greater control over exactly where you want your crosshair to go. And unfortunately in Fortnite, setting a low look sensitivity has one major drawback. You can't build or edit as quickly. So what many pros have been doing now is increasing their general look sense, but keeping their ADS sense at a low percentage, typically under 50%. For the longest time, he used to play with low sense, but recently, I mean, he made a considerable change and almost doubled it, which unsurprisingly has allowed him to perform quicker builds, edits, and even hip fire flicks, all of which are incredibly important to his playstyle. 
But again, a higher sensitivity comes a hit to your long range accuracy because aiming at longer distances requires precision more than anything, right? So that's just where low targeting sensitivities really come into play and why Mongrel chooses 30%. It enables him to be more precise when beaming players with his rifle, but at the same time, when he's not going for long range shots, he can still build and edit at the speed of light. So while it can be challenging to get used to two different sensitivities, at the end of the day, Mongrel's sensitivity setup allows him to experience the best of both worlds, quick builds and edits, along with great long range aim. So if your targeting sensitivity is currently above 60% and you're not too happy with your rifle aim, I suggest lowering it down to at least 40, maybe even lower, and just really experiment with that for a few days just to see how much of a difference it's actually making. And then ultimately, you know, it's, it really does come down to your preference. So the mileage may vary, but for most, a lower targeting sensitivity should really help your rifle aim a whole lot, all right? Lastly, something that a lot of us don't consider when taking build pieces is pre-aiming your opponent in their box. Many of us usually just drop down on a wall and we start swinging on it with zero regard to where our opponent is positioned in that box. We're so focused on taking the wall quickly, and I get it, but let me tell you what happens. Like, we ignore our opponent's position, which then becomes a problem once they edit. Either we won't have our shotgun out or our crosshair is in the wrong spot, and then we sadly end up losing the trade. But we can prevent this from happening, guys. Like what you should generally do when taking walls is first get a visual read on where your opponent is. This really helps you predict their next move like incredibly more reliably, right? But it also helps with the next thing that you should be conscious about, your crosshair placement. When it comes to crosshair placement and a wall replace scenario, you sort of just wanna track your opponent's movement and just keep your crosshair steady on them, right? Just so that you're ready when they make an edit. With specific edits like top right triangle, it might be better to just pre-aim where you think they're gonna peak rather than just trying to track their exact movements. But in general, just track your opponent with your crosshair, pull your shotgun after one swing to just bait edits, and you're gonna start securing more fights. All right, guys, we gotta do a recap real quick. Here we go. The first thing, try to be patient and line up your shotgun shots instead of just flicking all the time. Make sure that you always consider proper crosshair placement and resetting the head height. When it comes to rifles, spray at close range, all right? Tap fire at medium range and use first shot accuracy at long range. Take advantage of your enemy's movement as much as possible so you have a better idea where to aim. Lower your targeting sense between like 20 and 50% if you feel like AR aim needs work. And lastly, always pre-aim players in their box when taking pieces so you're ready for an edit play. But like I said at the start, man, great aim is mostly derived from practice. It's not enough just to know these techniques. You gotta put in the time. So use aim trainers on the regular, come up with a routine for yourself so you can just be consistent. And if you need a routine that always includes building and editing drills, check out our recent video on that here. But just try to have some sort of training routine so that you're always improving and never getting rusty. Once again, you already know who I am. I'm your motivation guy, man. You guys keep it up and stay grinding. See, that's why you gotta practice your aim.